Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with Arduino lesson number 29 where we're going to learn the do's and don'ts of Arduino software interrupts. Now in lesson 28 I showed you how to set up an Arduino interrupt and if you have not uh, done that lesson yet you need to go back and do that one and then based on that lesson I had a lot of questions come in and I wanted to I felt like it was really be good to have a follow-on lesson and so I want to talk a little bit more about this idea of an interrupt and kind of talk to you about the things that will work in an interrupt and the things that won't work in an interrupt so I need you to pour yourself a nice big cup of coffee Wow, that's good. And we're going to dig into this idea of interrupts a little bit more. Let me just catch you up that uh, in Lesson 28, if you remember, we created this uh, interrupt to allow us to blink two LEDs at the same time. One's blinking slow, the red one's blinking slow, and the yellow one's blinking fast. And we talked about last time about how that's hard because while you have a delay in there for the fast one to blink, you're stuck in that one line of code and you can't be going and doing something else and that's where an interrupt comes in. An interrupt is while you're doing one thing if the interrupt is triggered it runs off and does that and then comes back. And so let's just take a quick look at the code here to remind us what we did. You can go to toptechboy.com and get this code. It's uh, lesson number 28 in the Arduino lessons. Uh, I've got the code there for you. Okay, so if you remember, this is how we were blinking the LED. Digital right, red LED high, delay 1,000. That's a second digital right, red LED low, delay 1,000. That's turning the red LED on and off, on a second, off a second. Well, then how do we make the yellow one blink faster? Well, we come up here and we create a timer timer one dot initialize, and this is in microseconds, so we're saying. Uh, trigger the interrupt it's like an alarm clock alarm clock's going to go off every uh, 100,000 uh, microseconds and so that's like every tenth of a second it's going to sound the alarm and then timer one attach interrupt what do you do when the alarm goes off you run blink yellow and then we come down what does blink yellow do well if the led is off it turns it on if it's on it turns it off no delays no messing around and this is kind of getting now to the do's of being successful with an interrupt the do is whatever function that you are calling get in and out quick minimum amount of time there this isn't like a full featured multi-threading multitasking type of thing it's kind of like a little bit of a cheat you're doing one thing pause run out do something else come back and then continue but while you're gone you got to be gone the minimum amount of time possible you got to get back because if you're not careful you can generate timing problems that if you are doing a certain thing up here that is time sensitive and you come down here on an interrupt and then spend a lot of time down here you could get in a mess when you get back up to the top of the code so the number one do in being successful with these interrupts are do things that you can do quickly and if you look at my code here these are very quick things to turn something high that's quick to turn something low that's quick simple if statement that's quick not a big complicated long and drawn out uh, uh, function just something in and out quick so number one do is get in and out quick number two do something simple okay don't do a big long complex thing of code second do is do something simple okay so for the do's to be successful with a software interrupt you want to get in do something quickly and get out in and out as quickly as you can okay now let's get to some of the don'ts one of the don'ts is do not use a delay down here in the uh, interrupt okay because it, it's like it, it's like trying to time two things with a stopwatch it's like you got one stopwatch don't come down here and start messing with your stopwatch it'll get things confused and so let's just do that just to show you how that doesn't work let's come in here in this code and let's put a delay in here of 1000 okay that would be a one second delay and 
let's come over here and look at the circuit and then let's download this so you can see before I download it it's working correctly and now if you look at it what you can see is what did it do it's still working but what did it do it just completely ignored the delay okay and it's obvious that it delay ignored the delay because I put a one second delay down here and it's certainly the yellow is still blinking it just completely ignored that delay well if you'd put a shorter delay in there and you had thought it was in there it wouldn't be so obvious to you that it was ignoring your delay so don't do a delay okay another thing not to do down here are slow steps and what is a slow step printing is very slow now sometimes you can get away with a print in an interrupt but I think it's bad practice just don't do uh, don't do a print down there because you're just asking for trouble a print is a very very slow step and you're just asking for problems and a, a a third thing is is that you really don't want to mess with the serial port you don't want to mess with serial data because it's slow and it also can have some things associated with the internal timers and so if you start messing with the serial port you're going to uh, just be asking for for problems that as I've been doing some sample code what I can see is is that if you try to do serial functions down in the down in the uh, in the uh, interrupt function you're just uh, you're just asking for problems and so printing down here is dangerous because that's usually serial data it, it and it's also uh, it's it's also uh, uh, a very slow step and then finally you know certainly don't do something like ask the user for input like a serial while serial dot available uh, equal equal zero wait for data prompt you know getting data from the user no you don't want to do that down here so so the, the the interrupt the software interrupt is not the beat all and end all what it is is it's a little way to cheat like what we're showing here on blinking two LEDs at the same time where you can kind of interrupt what you're doing run do something else get right back as quick as you can and go on and then it is a very very powerful tool okay so this uh, lesson 28 was a quick way to do it lesson 29 here today is just some information about how to not get yourself in trouble with it and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back with a more advanced lesson on using interrupts for a little bit more difficult uh, problem and so like here we can see we can make them work for simple things but in some cases where you don't have any other option and you've got to do something more complicated down in the down in the interrupt I'm gonna go through one of those examples for you so I guess what we could call that is uh, you know a more advanced uh, interrupt example and we'll do that in lesson number 30 okay appreciate you guys tuning in think about giving us a thumbs up think about subscribing to the channel think about sharing this with other people on your social media Paul McQuarter from toptechboy.com I will talk to you guys later